Hey guys, Dadman here, and thanks for stopping by. Today I wanted to make a short video on the experiences I've had thus far in Paleo and the top six tips and tricks I picked up along the way to make your first days in Paleo a bit easier. Why six? Well, shout out to Singularity6 for making such a great game for all of us to enjoy. So stick around to make your first day or two in Paleo an easier one. So first tip, let's talk about comments I see on a daily basis in Discord. People say all the time, it's not fair, people will be so far ahead and I'll never catch up. Will there be people ahead of you? Sure. Does it matter? Not even a little bit. The biggest suggestion I will make in this whole guide is to play the game at your own speed, not someone else's. Yes, you can min-max this game just like any other by gardening exactly right, or crafting exactly right, or fishing exactly right, or questing in the absolute most effective and efficient method. And for some people, that's totally cool and they enjoy it. I would suggest a slightly different path though. Make sure you are doing things that are fun for you. Do you like fishing but don't really dig furniture crafting? Well, do more fishing. Not really into NPC relationships? Well then, don't focus on that. Focus on what you enjoy. Now, I'm not saying to ignore those things that you don't like completely because there are some uses to them, of course. For example, just because you don't like furniture crafting doesn't mean you shouldn't do any. You do need to level it up a bit to get your loom and glass blowing equipment. I'm just saying focus on the things that you really enjoy, especially at first. Also, you can buy leather or fabric for gold if you don't have a loom. So if you really don't like certain skills, no worries, there are ways around it. Next, tip number two. Let's talk about character creation. No need to rush this. If you are like me, you'll be playing this game for a long time to come, so make sure you create the look and feel that you want. I don't mean clothes or hair, those things can change, but I mean like body type, face type, voice, those things. You can compare my face on screen. It's like right near the... None of these faces are fat enough, I don't think. I think that's yeah, I was going to say, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Some people just click one or two and then they're done or just randomize and call it good. I would say go ahead and spend five or ten minutes here or more. There, There's no rush. At this time, there isn't a way to change those features once you select them. So pick something you like. Yes, I know you want to get in the game and start playing immediately, but don't overlook this aspect. Okay. Now let's talk about some of the initial struggles I had and hopefully help you over those hurdles. I have to say the biggest one for me personally was having enough money. I was advancing my skills at a pace I felt was pretty reasonable, but each time I'd reach a milestone like being able to upgrade my axe or my backpack storage for instance, I would never have enough coins to buy the recipes. So here's my advice which is tip number three. At first, sell the majority of stuff you get out in the world like fish, antlers, half to three quarters of the meat you get, half to three quarters of the pelts and fur you get, and then once you have a decent storage of those things, sell it all. Things to keep. Definitely keep all the ore that you get, all the clay. Don't sell any of that stuff. You will definitely need all of it. Also, seeds and veggies. I wouldn't sell those either. Gardening is a bit slow paced at first and the seeds can be quite expensive to get your crops up and going. So I would recommend holding on to everything that comes out of your garden or for your garden for future use in cooking and also in uh, keeping the vegetables because there is ways to extract seeds down the line from your vegetables. The fastest way I found to making money was to go hunting and fishing. So my method was this. I would make sure my bags are empty except for the food I would need, hunting and fishing materials. I'd start out hunting, but I would run along water sources. Each time I would spot in the water, the bubble circle, I would stop and fish that to get the starred fish, which is a higher value. And once I caught it, I would move on to more hunting or to other bubble spots. I wouldn't keep fishing. I would also shoot everything I see. Chappas, Cernux, everything. While you are out and about, make sure you are mining for copper, clay, and iron, but not stone. This isn't the time to be getting stone. I also would avoid bug catching at this time. 
fishing and bug catching take up a lot of space in your inventory. So I would only do one of those at a time. I wouldn't do both along with hunting while you're working on getting coins. Once all of the slots in your bag are full, that doesn't mean it's time to stop hunting. You can still pick up things you already have in your inventory. So keep hunting. Watch your inventory, and then when the red bars at the bottom get close to filling up, that's the time to go home. You won't be able to fish or bug catch when your inventory is full because you can't add new things to it, but you can add things that are already in your inventory. The next one is iron ore. I found that once I got to Bahari Bay, I was struggling to find iron ore. Initial thoughts of mine after running all over the place and looking all over the map is tip number four which is the north half of the map seems to be better for ore than the south. Also, the further east you get, which is closer to the bay, it seems the less ore you will find. Mine every single iron ore deposit you find. You will run out of iron, I guarantee it. So that is definitely one to not sell and don't run past a node. Also, look up on ledges and bluffs. Sure, you will find some down at ground level, but check up in the hills as well. There's definitely a lot to be found up there. Speaking of mining, all of the tools that are copper quality or higher actually fall into this category, which is tip number five. Don't let your tools break. Watch the health meter on your tools and repair them before they break. Repairing them costs repair kits, which aren't that expensive, but if the tool breaks, you have to completely rebuild it, which is a big waste of materials. Okay, my last tip is tip number six, which is a very simple but important one. If you are running out of storage space at your home, just make more chests. I have one chest that I use to access my storage right by my mailbox, so it's easily accessible right when I come in. And then a hidden group of storage chests just kind of tucked out of the way. They all feed into each other, so no sense in stacking them all up around where you're working. Just have one up there to access your inventory and then just hide all the rest out of the way. Okay, I thought of another tip, but I didn't want to call it tip number seven because I like having six tips for the shout out. So this one's just going to be called a bonus tip, which is keep your focus up by eating. Use your campfire and then your stove once you get it to make food. Don't eat raw foods like carrots. Save those and only eat cooked food. The reason to keep your focus up is that it makes leveling up your skills faster. Think of it like this. Each time you chop down a tree and collect the loot without focus, let's say that gives you one point towards your skill progression. Now, if you have focus, it will deduct those focus points and give you a bonus to your skill progression. That one point of skill you got for chopping down the tree will turn into two or three points. This is just an example with simple numbers to get the concept, not the actual values at play here. Just Think of your focus like a skill bonus that gets added on top of whatever skill you're doing. Also, there is a way to increase your max focus amount that you have and a way to increase the amount of focus you get per skill performed, like chopping down a tree, for example, to speed up your skill progression even faster. But I don't want to dive too deep into this topic for spoiler reasons and because it's a deep topic. For now, just keep your focus meter full or at least not empty to level faster. Once you learn how to increase your focus and bonus percent, I recommend balancing these out, spending one or 200 renown for raising your max amount, and then spending one or 200 for raising your bonus amount. Don't go all in on one or the other. I imagine there'll be other bonuses for this in the future that I'm not aware of at this time, so this might change in the future, but for now, this is how I see it, at least at the beginning stages, just split those two bonuses up, you know, keep them pretty even. Well, there are many other tips and tricks out there, and this video could have easily been 30 minutes long with 30 tips or more. I just wanted to make a quick initial video to get the most valuable information out there to you. As time goes on, I will create another guide that is more comprehensive. This one was just meant to get you through the first day or two in Paleo. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to be notified the next time I drop a handy guide like this one. Also, come check out my streams at twitch.tv slash danman143. And to all you Paleans out there, thanks for stopping by. This is Dadman out. Mm -hmm.